Hey everybody, it's Michelle. Welcome back to my Building the Career series. And this week we're starting off the businessman house. We have a pair of Sims here just trying to rebuild their lives after a shattering divorce. And yeah, I think we're gonna try and give them a really homey and special place to live. Now about those Sims, Marco Bianchi is a Windenburg businessman. He's an entrepreneur. I have, I have it in my mind that he is selling you know environmental equipment like windmills and solar panels and that kind of stuff throughout Windenburg. Uh, he is based out of Windenburg as opposed to Sam my Schooner or anywhere else and I thought as being part of Windenburg that I wanted to give him a historic home but a historic home with a twist and we're going to get to that in a few minutes. Marco and his recent ex-husband had a child Alexander and uh, when the ex left, he signed over full custody to Marco. So Marco and Alexander are now a household of two instead of three. Um, obviously, they're both devastated. You know, it's an incredibly hard thing to go through a divorce. And Alexander's like, what, nine, ten, something like that. So, uh, you know, they're having to learn a new dynamic. And this is a new space for both of them. And I think this is a new line of work for Marco. I think he's always been into business, but this is a, a new business line for him. And because I'm obsessed with tying characters together, uh, the ex-husband is going to feature in one of our future career paths. Not sure which one yet, but one of our future career paths. Okay, so you can see I'm going with a very basic kind of Tudor shape. It's a box with a porch. It's what it looks like right now, but I promise it's gonna get a little more interesting. I wanted to make sure that again, as a Tudor type house, that we would have, you know, a chimney block because of course it's gonna have a fireplace. No matter how tiny this house is and no matter how, <laughs> how squished it's gonna be because it's little and historic and we have two people in it, uh, you gotta have a fireplace in a historic home. Or at least I do. And now that I have that mostly placed the way I want, I can bring a half wall around the base of that chimney to you know, give it the volume it needs. I use tool to size up the chimney just a little just to give it the scale I wanted. I do eventually change those windows to dormers, or excuse me, those gable roofs in the front, those two details, I do eventually change them out to dormers, but we'll get to that in a bit. I love Windenburg, look how beautiful that is. That is so pretty. This house is up the hill from this little village and from a pub. You can see the aqueduct in the distance. It's just a beautiful world with so many pretty lots. Okay, the project I'm starting right now, and you'll see me kind of go through the development of this, is for the addition. I wanted to have a Tudor house, but with a very modern addition that I think is going to primarily be Alexander's space. I think Marco is more concerned about Alexander having a nice place to play and live and, and recover from the changes in their family than he is in having room for himself. He's a good dad, Marco's a good dad. And I fiddled with this for a while before deciding to be inspired by one of my favorite builders in the world, Kate Emerald. She did a video a little while back that had a lot of glass elements using the Island Living uh, roof panel for floors. Uh, she made these huge hallways and boxes and porches out of these amazing little glass objects. And I decided I wanted to kind of do my Kate Emerald tribute, which is to make a fully glass uh, addition using those items. Of course, with tool, even with a cube, there's always a bit of math involved. <laughs> so I had to do a little futzing of like, okay, how do I want this to work? Where do I want this to be? What I basically did is grabbed a bunch of those uh, glass items and flipped them over to the appropriate angles and placed them on those walls using the walls as guides. And what I'm gonna do is show you uh, in very big detail how I did this first one and then I'll go ahead and skip ahead to when I'm making uh, tweaks. Tweaks and decisions. If you aren't familiar with the tool mod, it's a genius mod by Twisted Mexi. 
it lets you place items with a greater degree of precision than the Sims 4 game allows and also even lets you place things off your lot, which is really fun. But for right now, what we're focused on is the fact that we can clone objects very easily, that we can move them precisely, and we can flip them into angles they otherwise would not be able to be placed. Or some actual grammatical way of putting that, because that was not grammatical at all. <laughs> You can tell I'm not going for extreme precision right here. It's more about getting, getting them generally in the right place before I take away the volume of the walls. Okay, and the procedure for the other two uh, walls is exactly the same, so we're gonna jump ahead now. Okay, we're back, and now we're gonna go ahead and take care of the walls inside the glass cube. I'm gonna go ahead and remove those panels and then make adjustments. Again, I won't show you the whole thing because it's a lot of fiddly, 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 but I'll show you the start of it. Uh, just basically trying to match these up, make sure they're even. Uh, make sure everything's at the right angle and spaced together well. You can see that while I did the initial uh, rotation in tool in live mode, I call it live mode. I know almost everyone else says live mode, but I always do live mode because we're live. <laughs> but uh, I'm doing a lot of the additional tweaks and adjustments in build mode. If you have any questions about tool, I'll go ahead and link to uh, Twisted Mixie's Patreon page and tool in the description. He has a wonderful, wonderful tutorial video that should really help you hit the ground running with this really powerful mod. I decided to put columns around the cube just to cover any, you know, imprecise places and also to give it again a sense of structure. Here I'm deciding to place, you know, a pretty typical Tudor siding from get together on the house, um, which necessitated changing the swatches of the glass panels, just because, you know, a really orangey wood and an ashy wood don't really go together that well. So I changed all of those up just to make, you know, it's supposed to look definitely like a modern addition, but I want it to be cohesive. I don't want it to clash. And one of my favorite things to do is to take the little slanted corner pieces of that exact same pattern and put them around each of the corners. It's just a fun little Tudor detail. And I think it just adds a, just a neat little difference to an otherwise pretty plain facade. Now to be clear, the cube on the right is counted as part of our 64 tile count. I think we're only at like 57 at this point. Um, I may go ahead and give us a porch on the front. I'm not sure. I have to think about that a little more as we go into the landscaping for the next video. I matched the brick as well as I could with the thought that maybe, you know, a several hundred year old building would probably have been, the chimney would have been repaired over time. Just go with it. Just go with it. I have a command on my stream. It's exclamation point, let it go for when I get a little too obsessive about details, which it's very easy for me to do. So I'm letting it go like Elsa. Okay, now Get Together has some of the best windows and doors in the game. I just, it's one of my favorite packs. If you don't have Get Together, it brings you both the super powerful club system for gameplay and just the gorgeous European focused um, windows, doors and such. And it, it's just beautiful. It's absolutely one of my favorite worlds to play in and one of my favorite build by catalogs. Now I'll probably, again, once I do the landscaping in the next video, I'll have a better idea of, you know, window boxes and awnings and things like that. You can't really separate those out from the landscaping. So I'm gonna 
address those in the next video. Please feel free to leave a comment below if you have an idea of what his garden should be like. Remember, this is a very busy, uh, starting in a new business, newly single dad. I'm not sure he has the, not sure he has the time to, to really keep up with a formal garden. So I, I'm curious if you have any ideas for what his space, for what his garden space should look like. And this is about the point at which I realized I did not want the roof of the cube to also be glass. Uh, I didn't like the way it looked. I wanted a better roof line. And I wanted, since this isn't actually a room anymore, there are no real walls or anything, I wanted, uh, since Alexander's gonna be living in this space, I wanted it to have a real roof to be truly protective of his space and his bed. I don't want him to get rained on. He's been through a bunch already. So I go ahead and replace the roof, take out those panels, and put in another gable roof. Now, as a man who is currently in the business of environmental equipment, like solar panels, windmills, water collectors, and the like, uh, I thought it was very fitting that once I gave the house an extension of that gable roof, you know, different size, different uh, roof swatch, different roof treatment, I thought making it a sun, a solar roof was totally the way to go. I ended up really happy with the results. I've always been a fan of the historic preservation principle of if you're going to add an addition to a historic building, don't make it look exactly like that historic building. Make it look a little different, or in this case, drastically different. So you know what the historic building part is and what the newer part is. Now I dipped inside just to plot out where the bathroom would be, you know, where the fireplace is and where the entrance to the porch would be, because those are going to be uh, pretty important with window placement, things like that. And I'll go ahead and do the furnishing in the third video in the Businessman House series. We're up to B now. We're out of the A's. It's very exciting. And after a lot of internal debate, this is where I decided that those little roofs would look better, replaced by get-together dormers in the appropriate swatch. And I'm really happy with the difference. I think it looks uh, more appropriate to the Tudor style and just a little cleaner. And I think Marco would he would appreciate that even in a historic house he's a fashionable and fastidious man his ex-husband isn't you know some mustache twirling villain but they became deeply incompatible with alexander pretty much the glue keeping them together yeah i just i love i love how this looks i changed the roof swatch to match the dormers and I really like how that sets off the solar roof as well on the addition sims dormers have this horrible habit of having the back part of them stick out like the edge of that roof doesn't bury itself enough in the roof that you're using that we place but these actually work okay if you fiddle with them these are some of my favorite dormers and at this point, we're looking pretty good. I really like this shell. I'm excited for what we do next time with landscaping. Again, feel free to give me suggestions in the comments. Yay! Businessman is fun. I'm enjoying this one. And after my last build, the athlete being base game and no mods, it feels great to be back to my, my helper mods again. So thank you very much for watching. And I will see you in my next video.